Ilya Laparev here and what I just played was study number 34 by Louis Fiar, Studies of the Young Cellist. I find this personally a very challenging study, maybe one of the most challenging studies of the whole book because of its bow stroke. Sautier, but this time on two strings. Today I will not go deeply into the Sautier bow stroke because that's a long topic and I already have an awesome video where I explain things quite into detail. You just need to click on this card right over here or you can find the link in the video description below to that video where I explain about Sautier. Anyway, you need to learn first the Sautier on one string and to do it properly because if you're not dominating this bow stroke, then you're gonna have a hard time doing this exercise here, which is on two strings. But anyway, let's say that you know and are able to play that sautier bow stroke. Then I have a couple of suggestions on how to practice this study here and how to improve a couple of things over here. The first step over here, this is actually a nice one. It's not even for the right hand, it's for the left hand. In order to improve our intonation and not only that, it's to fortify our left hand. Guess what I'm going to say now? Double stops. Double stops are always a great way to boost up your intonation, to hear things more clearly and so on. Of course, if you use your ears, because our ears are our best weapon to listen very carefully. So first things first, you want to do this exercise with double stops. Everything softly, piano, right? But anyway, it's maybe easier to show you than to explain in words. Sometimes it is just easier to watch how I do things instead of me talking around. So anyway, let's do this with double stops. Right, the rest is on you. Hope that makes sense. Another thing that is very handy to know here for the left hand is left hand anticipation. I know, if you have watched my other videos of this VR series, I always talk about left hand anticipation. If you watch the other videos and okay, I'll explain more into detail, you're gonna know why I'm telling this. Anyway, it's so easy to get completely out of coordination here in this study or bow because it's a very fast exercise. You know, the bow goes pretty fast and sometimes the bow goes very fast, so faster and faster and faster. And then our left hand, it stays behind, so it's not coordinated. And then, yeah, we lose total control of things. Let me show you how I would practice and develop on this. <laughs> Ready? Ready? Ready. Ready. Did you see the change here? So I go immediately. So you need to be always one step ahead, right? And this comes with practice because the more you practice, the more you understand things. 
Also, you can do this with the double stops. Just, okay, as the exercise before, I showed you how I study on intonation. You can do the same with double stops. So like that. Stop, but you get ready immediately. Ready. Stop, but ready. Ready. Now. So you see, my left hand moves first before I even change the bow. All right, now we come to the harder part, which is the bowing part. But again, as mentioned before, if you want to explore and know more about Sutiye, go check that video that I mentioned just before. But okay, let me show you here how I would practice this study. As we are combining two strings, I like to do this systematically, part per part. <laughs> Did you notice what I'm doing? I'm accentuating a little bit more on the higher note, so the C over here. This one. This is pretty handy to know. This can help you also. Then we try to combine one more. Okay. Uh -huh. So there we have this thing that we spoke about before, about left hand anticipation. So maybe you can do a gap first to get, you know, this alerting thing, like your left hand goes first. Ready. Now let's start to combine. Okay, getting better. But this needs training. This really needs a little bit of time. As I said before, this is a challenging study. So, all right, I just wanted to show you a little bit how I would practice on this study. So I was doing it ver first very slowly, part per part, then connecting. Then maybe you can increase the tempo. Go faster, faster, faster until the tempo that you desire. So that was actually it for the original exercise, but we do have some variations as well. Again, I highly recommend to do this first very slowly with a small amount of bow near the middle of the bow and on the string. Then you go faster and faster until you reach the tempo that you want. And by playing it faster, your bow will automatically bounce. I mean, not bounce like that, not this, but really like... Uh, Sautille, in other words, right? So here in this exercise, we have five variations. I mean, if I would be you, I wouldn't really focus on these bowing variations, although some of them are handy. Number one could be very handy. Number two, I would really not suggest to do because this is really difficult to play. At least for me, it is very difficult to play. I cannot play this. So that's why I'm not even going to explain it because why would I explain a thing that I'm not able to do it? So I'm done not talking bullshit around here. Number three, it's also nice to do. Number four, it's nice. And number five as well. But I wouldn't really like be too much unless if you're a geek or that you really want to do things, please go ahead. But um, it's not something that, um, I mean, you will find in cello repertoire. I mean, the original exercise you will find in pieces like Saint-Saëns cello concerto, that famous third movement, that faster passage, or in Davidov, maybe in Elgar also. Variation one, you can find this in Rococo variations, Elgar and other pieces. Variation number two, I don't know. I never faced a bow stroke like that, number two. If you have faced it somewhere, please let me know in the comment section below where you have found this number two. Number three, okay, this you mostly find in virtuosic pieces and so on. Number four as well and number five. So again, things like this. So do it slowly, bit by bit, small amount of bow on the string. When you get more familiar with it, do it faster, 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 faster. And like this, it works. It's actually about training. So the more you do it and the better it's gonna get afterwards. So that's practically it. This study is pretty straight to the point, but you need to understand about sautier before proceeding into this study number 34. 
Happy practicing and we'll see each other in the next FIAR, which is going to be the number 35, which is going to be a study for grupetos. Grupeto. Some of you might know what a grupetto means. Some of you probably don't know, but that's going to be for in the next lesson. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.